so we start from from the last video and, and we had derived two things rn is equal to this much and vn is equal to this much okay and we are now inclined to find out the energy of an electron moving in the nth orbit let's say let's say this is the nth orbit i'm not showing the other ones right so so this is my nth orbit and and the total energy total energy i denote by en the total energy en is equal to the ke plus the pe right and what is ke ke is nothing but half into m into vn square and what is my pe we had we had said it will be k into q1 q2 right this is ze this is minus e mono electronic electron so so it will be q1 q1 is ze q2 q2 is minus e upon upon it was rn if you remember we did that in the last video that the potential energy of two charge system if 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 q1 q2 is standing r apart q1 q2 is standing a distance r apart is is actually the the, the pe is k q1 q2 upon upon r okay there is a whole whole de uh, derivation to this but i i have not done that here <clears throat> okay that will become a bit too burdensome for you so that is equal to half m into v n square so i write it as z square upon n square into e to the power 4 upon 4 epsilon naught square each and every term will get squared right plus plus not plus because there is a there is a minus sign here so so let me remove this plus there will be a minus sign here and there will be minus k instead of k i'll write 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught right so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into into z e square upon r n right so 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 the the numerator here becomes the denominator and the denominator goes to the numerator right it is it's being divided it is it is multiplied by in a sense 1 upon r n so we have z by e square m so so we have z by e square m that goes to the to the to the numerator and n square h square epsilon naught that remains in the denominator right now <clears throat> that becomes okay so 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 this is this is z square right this is z square this is z square now now what is that equal to so so this becomes actually half m z square e to the power 4 upon n square or rather 4 this 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 goes and multiplies here and makes this 8 right and I'll write 8 here instead of making an, a different fraction so 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 this becomes an 8 here right I have already written n square epsilon naught square into h square right minus minus there is there is uh, an m here m m here right so i have an m okay there's an m and then there is a z square there's a z square right and there is an e to the power 4 so there is an e to the power 4 this pi actually cuts this right so upon we have a 4 n square right and an epsilon naught square and epsilon naught square and we have n square epsilon naught square and an h square right 
Now, now, before computing En, look at this. This whole thing is the Ke. This is Ke. And this is your Pe. Correct? Correct? Pe is the, is, is what? Do, do you find any relationship between them? Yes. Yes. And what is that? What is that? That that this term, the modulus of this term, modulus of PE is actually twice the KE. KE is, is I'm not putting a modulus because, because KE is already positive, right? So it's twice that. Did we see that? Did we see that? No? So, so what happens? My PE is actually actually minus mz square e to the power four upon upon four m square epsilon epsilon naught square, right? Epsilon epsilon naught multiplied epsilon naught square h square, right? And and my KE is 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 the same thing. Okay, mod of this divided by two. Okay, so, so mz square e to the power 4 upon 8 m square epsilon naught square h square, right? Correct? Now, what is that equal to? I take out mz square e to the power 4 upon m square epsilon naught square h square and it is 1 upon 8 minus 1 upon 4, right? Is it not? And I get this as 1 upon 8 minus 1 upon 4 is what? What? It is minus 1 upon 8. Is it not? You multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 to make the denominator the same. So it is 1 upon 8 minus 2 upon 8. So that is minus 1 upon 8. The numerators get added or subtracted as they are. So it is minus 1 upon 8. So I get this as minus 1 upon 8 into mz square e to the power 4 upon n square epsilon naught square h square. Okay? h square. Now, and, and that's your En. Now there's another interesting thing to see that En is nothing but nothing but half of your PE and with a negative value. Right? The energy, the total energy being negative, the, the negative sign tells you that this is a stable arrangement. Negative sign indicates that it's a stable, indicates that it is a stable it is a, a, a stable it is a stable arrangement had the energy been positive it would not have been okay this is stable this you you'll find even in the case of the sun earth system the gravitational systems are also having their total energy as equal to negative and they, hence they are stable systems, right? So, 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 two things. Now, so, so again, you should try to understand that, that En is actually negative of, it is directly proportional to Z square, inversely proportional to N square, and after that you have you have m e to the power 4 upon upon 8 epsilon naught square h square there okay and and this is something that you should keep in mind because this 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 will test this will be this concept will be tested in in numericals right so we see that m is directly proportional to uh, not M, not M. I'm talking about 
I'm talking about En, right? So En is is directly proportional to the z square, and and En is inversely proportional to one upon n square, right? Inversely proportional to that, and you should know that. No one is going to ask you that complicated expression for energy but these relations these relations they are what you are tested for inevitably okay so inevitably you'll be tested for this so 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 don't 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 lose sight of these and 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 the fact that and the fact that that this is there Okay, so the fact that that this is there. You can also say that that it is minus minus two K E which is equal to P E. Understand? This is also true. Correct. Those are the under the boxes. They are important expressions, and you should understand. Now, for a hydrogen atom, for a hydrogen atom what do we have for a hydrogen atom what is the value of Z Z is equal to 1 correct so E n becomes minus 1 upon n square into m e to the power 4 upon 8 epsilon naught square into h square right okay now the values of of these constants are known to us correct so so m is nothing but 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg and e is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs and epsilon naught is equal to 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 and h is equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 correct correct is there any unit they, they, there are units attached to all this is kg this is coulomb epsilon naught unit is the inverse of that so so it was newton so so it is newton meter square per coulomb square so it becomes coulomb square per meter square per newton right because because it came from where f is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into into q1 into q2 upon 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 r square so you see epsilon goes there, f comes here, so there, there is coulomb square, f is below, so that is per newton, meter square is below, so per meter square, and h also has a, a unit, this is joule, new is, is per second, so it is joule second. Whenever you want the unit of something, you should, you should bring about the corresponding relationship, some formula which involves that formula. Okay? So yeah, they have units. Now let us let us do that computation. And and the the value that you'll be getting, the, the value of E n that you'll be getting will be in joules, right? So it'll be in joules. So so let us try to find out. So M is 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 9.1 to the power minus 31 fine 
into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 19 to the power 4 okay divided by 8 into epsilon naught square 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 square into into divided by 6.6 .6 to the power th minus 34 squared that gives you minus 1 upon n square into 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 right this is in joules now I know that 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 19 joules so 1 joule is equal to 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 now if I if I do that if I divide this quantity by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 we get we get 13.6 electron volts upon n square minus and it is this that we have been using so frequently okay and and, and just two minutes away, you'll understand why I said Balmer was the person closest to, to the discovery of atom. Right? Okay. Okay. Fine. Now now that we know this the total energy and that is that that is in electron volts and 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 that looks something like this so so let us try to understand let's try to find out what will be the energy what will be the energy change when you move from e2 to e1 e2 minus e1 is what what is e2 minus e1 my E2 is what? Is, is minus 13.6 upon 2 square and minus, minus 13.6 upon 1 square but this is an electron volt and so I'll multiply it by 
1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 that converts it into joule correct this is the change in energy and whenever it makes a transition from this higher energy level 2 to to the lower energy level level 1 i get what happens i get a photon and what is the energy of the photon it should be equal to e2 minus e1 so this thing should be equal to h nu so i multiplied by h nu right that makes it what 13.6 I, I, I take out into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 2 square right that's that So I get nu is equal to 13.6 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 into 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon, upon 2 square. Right? And, and I want what is nu c is equal to nu lambda nu is equal to c by lambda so so that means c upon lambda is equal to now I will not keep on writing this this I, I'll, I'll just write the the calculated version of this whatever is the single value so it is c 13.6 into 1.6 to the power minus 19 divided by 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 that gives you 3.29 3.29 into 10 to the power 15 into 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 2 square so 1 upon lambda is this thing should get divided by 3 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 8 and that is 1 Oh, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, one square minus one upon two square. Now, what is that? This is per meter. Per meter. I want to convert it into centimeter. So this is this is per meter, right? Per meter I want to convert it into per centimeter so so this meter is 100 centimeters so it gets divided by 100 and I get get 109 89 8.98 so I, I, I write it this 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 2 square and that is that okay that is per centimeter okay that's per centimeter now if so so this is when it came from 2 and landed at 1 this is 2 to 1 transition what if it is from any n to any n n initial 1 upon n i square which is at a higher energy level to 1 upon n final 109899 1 upon lambda is equal to so many per centimeter square. Now look at Balmer. His transitions were occurring for ni equal to this is this is per centimeter, not centimeter square. Hold on. This is this is per centimeter so his transitions were occurring from n equal to 3 4 5 2 to n f is equal to 2 that was Balmer and see how accurate he was 
while predicting this. This is what we did, right? Per centimeter. And is this not, is this not very, very close to the Redbugs constant? Earlier, the Redbugs constant that we were using was, do you remember what? I remember it. It is 109677. Is it not? So had he just applied some classical physics to it and maybe had just had a leap of imagination that electrons were revolving around the nucleus, he would have landed at this. Correct? Not to say that he had that 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 L is equal to L is equal to M V N R N L N that he did not have that was given by by Bohr but then then he should have had he applied some more of himself I think he would have reached to the to the think that something is jumping from somewhere to somewhere and at least he could have come to the conclusion that electrons are not embedded they are not static and they are not randomly distributed okay and if they are not randomly distributed, they are not embedded, then they must have been moving. And if they were moving, then they must be moving around something. And that force had to be positive to provide the, to provide the centripetal force. Okay? So I feel that this fellow was very, very, very close to this because after all, he had already come up with, with this. which is pretty close to, to, to what we, what we, we calculate, correct? Okay. Fine. So now you understand why, why the hydrogen spectrum was showing a variability like this. It was due to, due to this.